question number 16. Now, we give the, uh, on the exam review, we give the questions like we're doing right here. Then we're going to display the answer. And then we're going to display the scripture text that back up the uh, knowledge of uh, the truth on this. And uh, praise God. And also, I like to say this because a lot of folks get hung up on this and can't, you know, it's a little hill for them to climb over. And these scriptures will help you climb that hill. Some folks I've heard, I mean, I, like I said, I've had kin folks, I've had friends say, oh, that's Old Testament stuff. Oh, that belongs to the Jews and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's just a, a charade from Satan to deceive you is all it's about when somebody gives you that. I mean, if, if you've swatted that from somebody else, that's just a deception mode that Satan put through. Because listen to this. The Bereans searched the scriptures to see if Paul was preaching truth. Isn't that such so, In book of Acts, does that know what it says? The Bereans searched the scriptures. And again, I ask you straight out, what scriptures did they search? It was called Torah, Old Testament. It uh, had to do with the uh, first five books of the, of the Torah, as well as the Psalms and the Prophets. And then you find uh, Jesus Christ even making statement in his doctrine and saying, search the scriptures. And uh, so, uh, again, he's in reference. And in his day and time, I know some don't want to believe this. There was no KJV in that day. <laughs> and uh, there was no Masoretic text in that day. And uh, what Paul, Jesus, the apostles, uh, whoever was in that time period, they read the Pentateuch. They also read the Septuagint. And it was in Greek, of course, at that time. And they also had the Old Hebrew. And uh, Josephus, an historian, had connection to all those. Pastor Paul read all of those. But as time went on, the Old Hebrew somehow got uh, obscured and uh, lost in history. And the Masoretic was a modern Hebrew, which is not the same as the Old. And the KJV was translated from the, uh, the what called Old Testament from the Masoretic text. And uh, so, again, there were errors there as well. Septuagint was, was uh, translated, listen to this, the Septuagint in the Greek was translated from the Old Hebrew, which was the original. So, and then somebody took the uh, Septuagint in the Greek, translated it over into our understanding. And that's where that's at. That's why it's more viable even than some of the others. And I know a lot of folks, I don't want to look in that. I just believe God wrote KJV. Nope. God did not write KJV. Translators made errors. Desiderius Erasmus made three printings, made three errors. And the 47 scholars under King James ordered them to translate uh, from Desiderius' writings. And they made the same. They copied, translated the same errors. And uh, what you can find them, I mean, I, I, I'll say it like I still use KJV at church. When I'm reading or studying, I use that because I was raised on it. I know where scriptures are there easier. And then when I have a question of something that's said, I will check out the what was actually came from closer to the original to see if it lines. Because most of it, most of it is it's in order anyway, as far as that goes. I mean, I received the Holy Ghost. I got baptized in Jesus' name and uh, got born again by going through KJV. So there's no squabble with that in that respect. But there are some things that are errors. And uh, as we get into this subject right here, now you've seen this first question. Uh, in question 16, Jeremiah prophesied that God would make a new covenant. The question is, but with whom? Now, I have a couple of choices you can make here. A, all the people of the world. Or B, was the new covenant with Israel and Judah. And... Uh, Sometimes you uh, can be surprised at the truth in the matter is. So here's the answer. The new covenant was made with Israel and Judah, not with Gentiles. And here's the, here's the connection, though. Uh, Jeremiah is one that said it would be with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now, as I say, we get in, the Gentiles get in, we grafted him. Remember Paul said, I believe in Romans 11, that uh, there was a good olive tree. It was in the garden area, protection, uh, mowed around it, took care of it, pruned, whatever they do to keep it going good, you know. 
And but there were some branches that Jesus said it ain't bearing fruit. And they did. They did branches. That was your natural Jew that didn't want to walk in the faith. So God took a hacksaw or something and just cut that branch off. And Jesus and his doctrine said it's cast into the fire because they wouldn't receive it. But the one tending that looked out across the fence and over in the woods or a wilderness area saw a wild olive tree, which was a Gentile's, and sliced out, cut off some of the branches and spliced it into that good one. So we were grafted in. And Paul said that we are now citizens of the commonwealth of Israel. So we are in Israel in that respect. And it's during the times of the Gentiles. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't made with the Gentiles, but Gentiles get in. It's just like in the original uh, uh, Sinai Covenant. You read Isaiah 50, chapter 56, chapter 58. It tells you that Gentiles can get into that covenant. They had to go through a process. You know, there was uh, Gentiles in the synagogues throughout the Roman Empire that came in and, and sat with the uh, Jews in the uh, synagogues and became uh, members in that respect uh, because th they had to go through and follow follow through, you know, like God said in Isaiah 58. You know, Gentiles who want to join themselves to the Lord would begin keeping the Sabbath day and so forth. <clears throat> so so the, the New Testament is the same in that respect. Uh, God uh, said, and let's, let's read on. We may have some scripture we want to display with this. In Jeremiah 31, 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Now, it's question and answer, so here's the answer. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, or saith Yahweh, Lord God Almighty, that I will make a new covenant, notice who he said it's with, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So, back in the earlier times, uh, the kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes of the north, you know, Israel did split into two nations. The Assyrian Empire took them captive, scattered them throughout the world. They stopped keeping Sabbath. Nobody knew who they are. Who are they, you know, in our day and time, they were just lost among the Gentiles as time went on. <clears throat> However, the kingdom of Judah retained Sabbath, all that stuff, and even today, of course, we call them Jews, and we know who they are because they are are still keeping the Sinai covenant uh, in that respect, as far as you know, as far as what's uh, being done today without the temple there, of course. So everybody knows who they are. They let, kept their identity in that respect, and uh, but still they transgressed and failed God, and God carried them to Babylon. So and finally they got where they just degraded and and you know and went downhill. And when Christ came, they reject basically they rejected Messiah, and. Uh, what he was teaching, and <clears throat> God said, I'm going to make a new covenant. It's going to be, though, with the house of Israel and Judah. But again, and, and, and Apostle Peter, Paul, and some of the earlier uh, Israeli people, Jewish people, they got into the new covenant. They received the Holy Ghost in Acts 2 and 4 first, <clears throat> and the gospel began to be preached and spread throughout uh, the regions. Gentiles began to come in. Cornelius was, uh, uh, his uh, household got in, but they got in the same way Peter and them did. They received the Holy Ghost, they spoke with tongues, and then they were in the kingdom. <clears throat> so everybody that gets the Holy Ghost is in the kingdom of the Son, Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible said. Paul said he takes us out of the kingdom of the world and translates us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So everybody, everybody that gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost is in the kingdom, and Jesus Christ is your Lord. Praise God. However, this proves, now, I don't think I have it in the scripture text, but I'll just say it just for a few minutes here about, uh, in, in the Sinai covenant, God spoke ten commandments from the mountaintop. Did he not? You remember reading that? And all Israel was shaking and scared and all that, you know, and, uh, they told Moses, you, you go up there and talk to God and you get some stuff and you write it down, you come tell us. But God himself spoke ten commandments from Mount Sinai. And that's considered what's called royal law. All ten commandments were spoken by Yahweh himself with an audible voice and that scared the people. Now, in our day and time, I mean throughout time in, in history, we'll say it like that, that 
people were failing God, you know, Israel was, and uh, I guess basically living like the Gentiles. And God was wanting them to be a separate people, and so they transgressed, and they failed God in that respect, and uh, then God said, I'm going to make a new covenant. Now, what he done with this new covenant, he took his laws off of parchment, off of the stone, and put it into the heart. And and I've heard, like I said one time, as a dear friend of mine said, he, you know, we, we you know what we teach. We teach Sabbath day still valid, which it is. And uh, a lot of them say, "Well, I got the Holy Ghost, so therefore I'm, I'm keeping Sabbath." You know, you know that that is man's uh, traditional belief. There, that's all that is. It's not the truth. And of course, we got proof behind this. I don't think it may or may not be in one of these questions. But uh, anyway, you can see the answer to uh, this one here, number sixteen. It was with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It did not say with anybody else. So that is the truthful biblical answer.